If there was a little village called Beer, and in that village there was a pub called the Barrel of Beer, well you'd have to go just so you could say, I've had a beer in beer in the Barrel of Beer, wouldn't you? Today's ride was going to take us south from Shaftesbury to look at the very famous Cern Giant before swinging round Dorchester to the equally famous Durdle Door and then cutting across west for our final stop in the little village of Beer. Well, that was Shaftesbury's folks, and I've got to say, it was a real delight. We loved it, especially the old part of the town and the nostalgic walk up Gold Hill. So this was day three of our trip, and once again, we were blessed with the weather. We had fantastic weather for our last trip in the Yorkshire Dales and here we are again on a glorious sunny day with a temperature in the 20s which was just perfect. Not too hot, especially with my new climb induction jacket which I invested in specifically for summer wear. My normal rucker jacket is brilliant in winter but it's very heavy and very uncomfortable when it gets too hot. And I've got to admit, this new climb jacket, fantastic really cool lightweight uh, not cheap but like with everything you get what you pay for by the way i'm not getting sponsored by clan this is just my personal opinion Let's get back to the Cern Abbas Giant. I was really looking forward to seeing this because one, I've never seen it before and two, the size of the structure is incredible and I'm always fascinated by how these things come to be. Who created it? Who put it there? Why did they do it? Anyway, more of that later. Warning, for those of a sensitive disposition, you might want to skip these next few minutes. So here we are folks, the Cern Abbas Giant. So somewhere across the Cern Valley, you can't pick it out very well here, is the giant naked man. The Cern Abbas Giant, so called because it's located near the village of Cern Abbas, is a bit of an enigma. Nobody really knows how old it is or what it's there for. Some people associate it with a Saxon deity, while other scholars think it's something to do with the Romano-British figure of Hercules, while other people think it's some sort of satire on Oliver Cromwell. Either way, I think everybody agrees that it can only be dated back to something like 1694. Regardless of its age, the Cern Abbas Giant has become an important part of local culture and folklore, which associates it with fertility, and for obvious reasons. Apparently, postcards of the giant were the only indecent photographs that could be sent through the English post office. What we do know for sure is that it's 180 feet tall and Britain's largest Chalk Hill figure.
Dorchester is the county town of Dorset and was founded in 1305. Perhaps it's most famous for being Thomas Hardy's home and featured in his novel The Mayor of Casterbridge. Its most famous villain being Hanging Judge Jeffreys, who sentenced 74 people for execution during the rebellion against King James II in 1685. Neither of us have been to Durdle Door. In fact, to be honest, I've never even heard of it until I saw it on TV. It had been in the news because of teenagers tombstoning off the top of it. So what's tombstoning? Well, apparently jumping off high rocks into shallow water. It's obviously very dangerous. Several people got seriously injured. But then again, if you indulge in something called tombstoning, still, it's supposed to be a very beautiful spot. So we thought we'd take a look anyway. Doodle Door is an iconic attraction and a very famous tourist spot, but I must admit we were very surprised at how busy it was given the coronavirus restrictions. This is the famous Doodle Door, and if anybody's wondering what happened to the cruise industry, here it is. Sad to say, but for obvious reasons, people aren't taking cruises because of coronavirus, so what do you do with the cruise ship? You just anchor them off the coast in the English Channel. Durdle Door is probably the most famous stone arch anywhere in the world. It was created when the sea of peace through the Portland limestone around 10,000 years ago. And it's one of Dorset's most photographed and iconic landmarks. It's part of the Jurassic Coast Heritage Site which stretches from Exmouth in East Devon to Studland Bay in Dorset, a distance of about 96 miles. So that was Durdle Door folks, it was indeed a beautiful place. Having said that, it's a long hike down to the beach, especially if you're wearing biker gear, which of course is why we didn't do it. Maybe next time.
The little village of Axmouth is about half a mile from the sea. It was once one of the most important harbours on the coast of southwest England. Sadly, it lost that role in the 14th century when part of the cliff fell into the harbour, so it's now only used by small boats. The village as it's known today dates at least to the 7th century and was owned by Edward the Confessor and later William the Conqueror. So this looks like the road into beer folks, a narrow, steep, windy road and I was hoping that we wouldn't have to reverse this on our way out. Our accommodation in Beer was another little B&B, but sadly it didn't have its own parking space. So unfortunately we had to park in the local public car park, which wasn't really ideal. When we're booking accommodation, one of our key rules is always to have secure parking for the bikes. We're not fans of leaving our bikes in a public car park, especially overnight, but since it's a kind of sleepy little village, we're hoping that everything was going to be okay. So, let's go and check out our b and No, this is it. Oh, this is Belmont House. Very compact. Now we're in room four. Oh, interesting little place. Look at this, two little swans with chocolates on the bed. Oh, that's really cute. And a box of these and robes. It's cute. Um, um, yeah. It's small, it's different. Complimentary box of fizz. And look at the view. Wow. <laughs> Brilliant. Sea view. Fridge. Robes. Oh, look at that. A nice little corner tub. Yeah. Right, let's go and explore. We're here in Beer. It's a corner of the East Devon area of outstanding natural beauty and it's where the Jurassic Coast actually starts. It's also where the Romans came to quarry stone and where fishermen have earned a living for centuries and still do. You can get fresh caught fish straight from the sea. 
Apart from fishing, Beer is also known for its history of smuggling, as it grew up around Smuggler's Cove. In fact, the men of Beer were once known as the very kings of smugglers. And it's very warm, about 26 degrees. Just arrived, so we're just checking out the place out. Then in a minute we'll go and find where the best place to have beer and food is. Morning. The following clip contains a middle-aged man being slightly grumpy. So we're here in beer and we've come out for a dinner sitting outside the Anchor Inn uh, because it's supposed to be, have a good sea view. Well, okay, it has, but this is the sea view. And we're down there. <laughs> I've been spent about half an hour downloading an app. You know how frustrating it gets when technology doesn't work the way it's supposed to. And filling it in and putting credit card details in and ordering and all that malarkey. I didn't have the, the real ale that was on the app, so now I've got Guinness in a plastic cup and and Rioja. Rioja, look at it. It could be Coca-Cola, look at it. In a, in a plastic glass, in a plastic glass. Cheers everybody. Another pub, another beer in beer. Ignore the temporary grumpiness, beer is actually a really lovely place to visit. Our accommodation in Belmont House B&B was okay, in fairness. I think the owners tried very hard to make it homely. But the truth is, if you're on bikes and you've got a lot of biker gear, it was probably a little bit cramped, a bit too small. And also the lack of private secure parking for the bikes was a factor. But overall, a really pleasant stay. Today we're heading to the north coast of Devon via Exmoor and the towns of Linton and Lynmouth to our final destination, the Blue Bull Inn. planning our tours we don't have any strict stipulation about the kind of routes we're taking other than wherever possible avoid motorways a roads dual carriageways and trying to find some off the beaten track roads without going down dirt tracks well this route to Exmoor certainly was interesting
Sadly, back on an A road, but not for too much longer. You really don't want to be meeting a tractor on this road. What makes these kind of roads difficult is you can't ride down the middle because it's full of crud and grass and dirt usually. So you've got to hug the side and tilted away from the hedges. Wow, back on a main road. As you leave the south coast and head to the north coast of Devon, there really are some fantastically uncrowded, lovely little roads. From the area of outstanding beauty in the south, you head up further north, eventually to get into the wilds of Exmoor. The legs stretch in the middle of Exmoor, miles from anywhere. riding through Exmoor and came across this tiny little village of Withypool and so it's time to stop for our very first cream tea with proper Devonshire clotted cream. The tiny village of Withypool has one shop and one pub in which General Eisenhower spent much of his time planning the D-Day landings. The village also boasts a very old set of shell petrol pumps. Should 
Proper fuzzy cream. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Big question is, which goes first, the cream or the jam? Suitably rested and refreshed, in fact pretty stuffed with cream tea, we pressed on with our ride through Exmoor and to the coast, to our next stop of Linton and Lynmouth. We love this kind of riding, quiet roads, not a vehicle in sight. Exmoor is reportedly one of the Earth's oldest features, dating back 200 million years. It's home to a range of wildlife, including ponies and the famous yet elusive Beast of Exmoor, which we didn't get to see this time around. In British folklore, the Beast of Exmoor is a phantom cat said to roam the fields of Exmoor and was first spotted in the 1970s. These wild ponies are only wild by name, they're actually allowed to roam and graze freely on the moors but they're owned by local farmers. What a beautiful ride. No matter what you say, we get the right weather in England, the riding's as good as anywhere.
The twin towns of Linton and Lynmouth are still situated within Exmoor National Park and are surrounded by incredible scenery, often known as Little Switzerland. It's a walker's paradise. Lynmouth sits at sea level, whereas Linton sits higher, and they're both connected by the Cliff Railway, the highest and steepest fully water-powered Victorian railway in the world. We anticipated that parking might be difficult, so we pulled into the first car park we saw and decided we'd walk the rest of the way. On the 15th of August 1952, the tiny village of Lynmouth suffered what could be described as the worst river flood in history. 34 people died and the event became known as the Lynmouth Flood Disaster. The famous Linton and Lynmouth Funicular Cliff Railway opened in 1890 and is the highest and steepest totally water-powered railway in the world. Lynmouth was a lovely little place and we'll definitely go back there and visit again. But right now it was time to head off to our final stop which is the Blue Bowl Inn in Countisbury, only a short ride away.